I love it. We're already having a debate here. <laughs> When the Grand Moolah shows up and the professor all the way from New York with a crystal ball, Professor Makamuta, you know it's going to be a good show. Ahmed Nasir Abdai, senior counsel, is here. Thank you so much for coming, sir. My pleasure, always. And Prof, as always, good to see you. Thanks for flying back. It, it's not flying back. Welcome home. Mean, I've been here for a while. <laughs> okay. And I've come to stay. Oh. At least until August the 9th. Oh. Yes. That's some breaking news there. It is some breaking news. I want to make sure that their path to, to the State House is completely blocked. So, Grand Mullah, what do you have to say to that? I, the I, president I, today in Sagana 3, we were all watching. Actually, you know what? Let's listen to a bit of what he said. Even though it was in uh, local language, there's a translation. We'll check, let's take a look. <laughs> Nego, Tony Terre, on a monaco, a quarter, a can eat a rainy as okay, Kunako, Beren to come, when you did not dinner. Never did a motor on him hit, no, ha, 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 and that's a right he will exercise, I think, on 9th of August uh, uh, 2022. That he has more voice than one person is a false pretense he should be disabused of. Prof, what do you think? I mean, he was asking the community in Dallas Central Kenya, he said, listen, endorse the old man. Even though he didn't rule out Ruto for the future, but he said, for now, let's endorse the old man. Well, I think, um, obviously, you know, he's the head of state. And, and so, therefore, he's got to be diplomatic in how he speaks. And I think, um, you know, for the most part, he was diplomatic. I think what my friend uh, Ahmed Nasser is not recognizing when he, when he says that Mr. Kenyatta only has one vote, what he's not recognizing is the fact that um, what happened today was historic. It's the first time, really, in the history of the country that a sitting head of state has gone out and publicly lambasted his deputy, saying that the deputy was unfit for office for a multiplicity of reasons, not least of which include being ethically challenged, uh, being petulant and impudent, um, you, you know, unable to execute his duties, and essentially being absent from office, what we call a war, absent without leave. You know? And so, therefore, this is historic, uh, Amenasi, that a sitting head of state has disowned, disinherited, and taught his community to do the same with a sitting deputy president. That is significant. Um, I know that you may not be his friend anymore, um, you know, the, 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 the sitting head of state. You know, but no, no, you, you know, you might not be his friend because I think you have found new friends. Are you his friend? You have found new, you have found new friends. Are you his friend uh, now? Well, I mean, I'm talking about you no, for now. Answer the question. Are you his friend now? I have never been his enemy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is he now I've, I've never been his enemy. Uh, and but senior counsel, what do you think? I mean, is he... No, no, first I think, uh, you know, it's not good to lie about history. I mean, this is not the first time a president has put down his vice president. It has happened. I mean, Moy did the same with, uh, with uh, Saitoti publicly. Not in, a, not in the same, no. not with the same disdain. Okay, okay. I'm, not, I'm not saying publicly that this man should not succeed. But you me. know, but you know, and Come on, Grand Mullah. Let, let, uh, let me put it like this, you know. Yes. An angry president putting down his deputy president means nothing. I mean, there's no love lost between the two. We know that. I mean, Uhuru has no time for his deputy for the last four or five years. He's entitled to express his views. But I think we are making it more than just the expression of one person's view. Of course, he's the president. Nobody denies. But, you know, I mean, if he says, I mean, he said a lot of things about... Uh, about, I think, the deputy president. Some of them fair, some of them not fair. But, you know, I mean, could you, could this, you, could you this name, is not the first time that we have had the president talk. We know the president. We give certain premium or value to his speech. Many of the things he says, even Mamamboga dismisses it. Nobody gives him much credence on what he says. Some of the issues, we listen to him and we respect his view, but nobody worships him, you know. 
And I think the mistake uh, the president makes is, I think there's a fallacy he believes that he can decide the destiny of this country. He can't. I mean, we know, we know when he ran for president in 2013, how had he struggled to become president. And it's the people that decided that he will be president. It's the people of Kenya that decided so many times that Raila will not become president. And I think they will speak one more time. Along the same line, they have spoken for the <laughs> three, four, five times. But I think uh, we just need to appreciate that the president has a right to speak as he likes. Whether it is a statement like or not, whether it is a little bit pedestrian, it's up to him. Yeah, but, but I think, uh, with, with all due respect to my friend, you know, Ahmed is a, a spin meister, a propagandist par excellence. But the, between the two of us, you are the only one who no, is paid. No, 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 wait, wait you are the only one who is paid wait, wait, to wait, spin. Wait, wait, you, you, you've heard your say. I practice You've heard your say. <laughs> if today, yeah. let me just tell you this. If today Mr. Kenyatta had gone to Sagana 3 uh, and hosted uh, Mr. Ruto to the rooftops, yeah, uh, I know that the grandmother does not drink. But today he will be drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, today he would have he would have taken alcohol. Yeah. The reason why it is, is disparaging Mr. Kenyatta is it's because Mr. Kenyatta has decided that Mr. Ruto does not have the goods to lead the country. If Mr. Kenyatta has worked with Mr. Ruto for ten years and has decided that Mr. Ruto is an empty suit, for whatever reason. Is, is an empty suit because he cannot execute his own mandate as, as a deputy president. You know, uh, he's entitled to that, and I think Kenyans ought to take that into account Absolute. because this is a person. Absolutely. Th this is a person who knows the other person. Now, let me tell you something. He said something else too. He said uh, Mr. K Mr. Kenyatta went and uh, t t talked some things that are not exactly, um, you know, true. I would like him to tell me or to tell the the the, the viewers what Mr. Kenyatta said today about Mr. Ruto, that is not true. No, no, first I think, let, let me visit what, uh, he made a very good point. He says that the president worked with the deputy president for 10 years and he knows. But what he doesn't tell us is that the president competed against Raila two elections and he has a lot of things, or he, he knows a lot of things about Raila. And he said so many times that Raila will destroy this country. He said Raila is not the right person to lead this country. He said so many times that Raila does not have what it takes to run a country of this. He and, said so many times. And if you believe, and you, if you believe what people say on a campaign trail against each other, you believe anything. I mean, today was a, I, I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean, I thought. Campaign trail, no, just listen. Yeah, no, 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 no. Grand Muller, I thought that you are well trained as a lawyer to understand m moments and places and what people say during certain moments and places. This was not a campaign speech that, uh, that, 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 that Mr. Kenyatta, no it was not. It, it was really a statement of the country <laughs> that here I am, I sit um, and I'm disowning my deputy president who is unfit no, no, but for I, duty I, but and no, for no, office. No, no. I, I think he has to be fair. You know sometimes if you don't speak logic, you don't look good eh? and that's your problem. Eh? <laughs> you are saying a president is speaking in a vernacular language that's not understood by the rest of the country except one community. It's a national address to the country. What's wrong with you? No, 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 no. I mean, first of all... No, no, but answer no, the question. No, no, What's wrong with you? No, first of all, do not call our national African languages vernaculars. They are not. That's a racist, colonialist language. Kikuyu is a national language. Somali is a national language. No, it's not Kamba is not, is it, no, these are national languages. I've made my yeah. point, and I think have, no, 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 instead he's, of addressing it, he's entitled but to addressing. No, no, but, he's but entitled you, to. You understand what the senior council just it said? It can't right? be a national uh, address. No, 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 no. no I'm, he's, uh, we're speaking to a community. But let me ask you a question. Do you think that Kenyans do not did not understand what he was saying? No, actually, I, he communicated. I, I didn't. Grand Mula, did you understand? Of course, I, he, of course, of course he did. not. Of course not. Of course, you did. You know, if the president says that he will address the whole country mm. and calls the TV the, the way he used to call mm. when he's in the state house and address us, mm. we will all listen to it. Mm. But if he says that I will speak in one language, of, nobody. I, I didn't bother. I think you should I travel. I think you should travel to the United States, uh, go to the University of Irvine in California, and take classes by Professor Ngugi Wathiongo about the importance 
of African languages. But uh, what, what, do, what impact did it have today, or do you think, on the deputy president especially, the president's address? What impact do you think, senior counsel? I think um, zero impact, you know. I mean, I mean, the speech was, okay, I mean, he endorsed the Raila, but, I mean, he endorsed the Raila in 2018. I mean, he endorsed Raila in 2019. He endorsed Raila so many occasions. So today, event was no event, actually. It did not, it was not newsworthy. And I think Prof will agree with, my, with me. I mean, the president's view about the deputy president is known since 2018. Eh? I mean, nothing has changed, you know. Complete disdain, locked him out of his office, locked him out of the cabinet, threw him to the dogs, you know. I mean, th I mean that, that was a four, five year process. Uh, the pattern we know, the metrics we know, the facts we know, so nothing changed today. That the president is supporting Raila, I mean, nothing changed. I mean, Raila was his mm. president sidekick from 2018. Mm. I mean, he was eating from the president's hands from 2018. Yeah, I he think was the president's assistant from 2018. He was the 2019. So nothing changed. What, what, what happened today that did not happen, for example, in 2018 you know, so I or think, 2019? So I think you came here with uh, some rehearsed lines no, no. That, uh, that you are now spouting. Uh, let me tell you something. In the history of this country, and you know this, and if I was to wake you up in the middle of the night, when you don't remember your rehearsed lines, when you would speak the truth, if I was to wake you up in the morning, in, you know, in the middle of the night, you would understand the legacy, the sacrifice, the qualities of, the, of leadership that Mr. Odinga has exemplified in the history of this country. What, what? You would know that Mr. Odinga is Kenya's foremost living liberator, without, without, without even question. As I said uh, on another program the other day, he is our Nelson Mandela. And I answered you. On, 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 on the opposite side, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's our Putulizzi. Wait, wait a minute. On, on the opposite side, you have a precocious young man who has never sacrificed for a single day, who cannot explain his worth, who is riddled with scandal after scandal, you know, who is impatient to capture the reins of the state so that he can change our constitution to abolish term limits so that he can allow his friends and family members to plunder the treasury of this country. That is the kind of person oh, no, Pro, that you want to impose Pro, on Kenya. You are talking of... I mean, I mean this, is, this, is, this is... You are talking of rehearsed do you lines. Love, do, you, do you love Kenya, something really? Something he has been saying for the last 10 years. The same lines. He hasn't even, I mean, there's no new, there's no new words you have used. These are the same stuff you say, that Raila is the librate. Whom has he librated and from what? Perhaps, uh, you know, the gentleman here should go back and read some history. You know, if you look at the history of the Second Liberation, for example, you look at the struggle for the, for the, for, for the 2010 Constitution, look at all of those things. I was a player, I was you, an actor. You look at his role during the Moi regime. The kinds of things that he did. What? Where was your man? No, no. Your man was a kind of hawk. Your man no, was. You, 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 no. Listen, 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 listen for a minute. Your man was in charge of the police state. <laughs> in, you know, when Mr. Moy was in power. That is the person that you want us to elect, no, 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 You know, we are, we are tired of these yeah. old lines. You have said it for the last few years. Are you going to openly, are you going to openly are you going to openly endorse, endorse uh, Mr. Ruto today? It's for me to decide not you should, to. You should openly endorse him. But I don't want, you know, I don't want this distorted history that you have been saying for the last 10 years. What? You know, this hero worshipping, you know, this well, fucking up, you know, to No, Raila. no, 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 but look... It doesn't pay, you no, know, because you're distorting history. No, 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 I'm not distorting mm. history. This, this history is known, even if, by children. If, All right. if you tell us Raila was a minister for roads, we will agree with that, or minister for energy. Those are undisputed facts, but don't say... And, 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 he, performed, and, he, and he performed extremely well in that portfolio no. as minister for roads. Who told you? Who told you? It's a fact. Gentlemen, let's... <laughs> We can talk about this all night, which is great debate, but let's go back to Sagana. The president also took aim at the churches, saying, oh, in fact, let's take a listen. Let's take a listen, and then we'll talk about it. Yeah? Muambia watu ukweli. Izu wale wotire modo tede te gai wake. Izu wale wotire modo tede te dhayo. 
Yeni Na modu wa hodha kakere ya hodha Kuli igana na kere ya gai ya mohete Na neto hodha ga No do go ke ha ha toro na wa horora ruo besa siya wo isi O ke oto heni Senior Council of President taking a direct hit at churches, saying they're accusing them of taking proceeds of corruption. Obviously, a dig, a direct dig at Deputy President William Ruto. You know, I mean, when a Kenyan leader, whether he's the president or anybody else, talks about corruption, he's not credible. I mean, I don't know why you guys give credence to a Kenyan leader talking about corruption. I mean, how can a Kenyan leader, leader whether he's the president, the deputy president, former prime minister or a politician talking, how, why do you listen? Because it's crap, it's bullshit. Don't listen to them because they don't practice what they talk about. President Uru is the first, he told us that in his government, two billion is stolen by day. He has done nothing about that. He has not arrested a single person. He told us that he has appointed a commission to investigate the COVID billionaires. That's about one year and a half, two years ago. Nothing has happened. So, if the president talks about the weather or, you know, or agriculture or something else, people should listen to him. But when a Kenyan leader talks about corruption or accuses someone of having a lot of wealth he cannot explain, mm. don't listen to him because the person making the allegation must be on a pedestal that he can make those speeches. But in my humble view, there is no Kenyan politician who can pontificate or castigate someone or, you know, belittle or talk about another person's corruption. Because we know how the Kenyan politician makes his money. We know, the, I, the other day I said that the Uru's cabinet has five dollar billionaire and, he, you know, he has, <laughs> he made a lot of noise. But during the tenure of President Kenyatta, trillions of shillings were stolen and not a single shilling has been recovered. And who stole that money? It's the people in the executive. It's the people who run the government. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I will listen to the president if he talks about yeah. a lot of things. Yeah. But that, when he talks about corruption, I have no time for that. Yeah, so, so that is uh, an unfortunate sort of spin and narrative. Everything is a spin, eh? No, no, no. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a spin that, and a narrative that um, whose objective is to excuse corruption. It is to, uh, it, it is to say that corruption is here with us to stay. Let us not fight it. Um, let, us, let us accept it. Um, and let us embrace those who are in fact corrupt. Um, the effect of what he has said is just that, which is a platform that's been adopted by the deputy president that, and his people, his advisors, is that uh, we will not fight corruption because corruption is here to stay, is with us. You know, we cannot do anything about it. Uh, let me tell Hamid that the first thing that you do with a problem is to recognize it, is to define it. And it is, it is to use the moral authority, you know, of those institutions and individuals in society who can speak about something, to speak about it, so that the rest, the rest of us can mobilize ourselves to fight that vice. When you say that Kenyan politicians are corrupt, I don't disagree with you. They are corrupt. So why don't you but, listen but, to them when they lecture you on corruption? Listen, but if you say that we, we should never listen to them when they talk about corruption, that's tantamount to saying that we should not fight it. No, no, no. That's tantamount to saying we should no, not no, fight prof, it. And, and, that, and that's a wrong approach. No, no, prof. You know, so, so, so for example, if, um, you know, if, if um, and, and, and I know the reason why you are reluctant to, to accept that leaders should talk about corruption. It fundamentally, is because the leader that you support cannot talk about corruption. The, 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 the head of state here was talking about um, the monies that are given to the churches, you know, um, every day and twice on Sundays by the deputy president. If you go back and you tabulate, you know, you can calculate and tabulate how much money this person has given the churches. It runs into the hundreds of millions of dollars. Okay, but... The, the, okay. Wait a minute, don't, don't stop me from making the point, because I, I know you are afraid of this point. 
it runs to the hundreds of millions of dollars. Let, let's ask the question and get an answer. Where did that money come from? When the head of state says that the money came from, uh, was stolen from uh, projects rel relating to dams and, and, and other you know, projects, should, 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 should the head of state not know no, wh wh no. where that money came let from? Let me answer you. Let so, me answer you so, now. So, 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 so uh, let me just conclude by saying this, uh, Grand Muller, to say that we cannot erase the language of corruption and activism about corruption and speech about corruption by Kenyans from our lexicon. Let me answer, we have let to me speak answer about you it. very easy. Let me answer you because oh. the, your arguments are not very sophisticated. Mm. Uh, now, two ways. Yeah? First, if the president is saying that the money that's given to the church are from corrupt proceeds, mm -hmm. why doesn't he give first money that's not corrupt, <laughs> I mean, uh, proceeds to the church? Clean money. Why doesn't he give clean money to the church? That's one. Secondly, if the president says that he knows the source, is the, he's the head of his state. I mean, is the, he exercises executive powers. He has everybody. I mean, he knows what's in the account of everybody. He knows where money comes from. If he knows money came from corrupt projects mm -hmm. to an individual, why is he telling us, you know, mm -hmm. if he's genuine? Mm -hmm. Why is he telling us? Mm -hmm. If he's genuine, he will have nabbed the money when it's in one account brought to court the person who has stolen that money and said that this money was stolen from that project. Uh, you know, the difference between me and the prof is he likes hearing, hearing lullabies, you know. He likes to hear stories. <laughs> and I don't want to, if, if someone is not sincere, you don't have to listen to that person. Yeah. You have to listen to genuine people who express genuine concern for the country. But if someone wa wants to make a political point, I mean, it's not worth your time to waste listening to that person. So when the president talks about, you know, that someone has stolen money from a project and he's given to a church, if he has the evidence, why is he telling us? Why doesn't he act on it? I think, uh, I mean, I, in the I, last... You know, I, you know let, me say, let, let, me, let me give you credit. You know, he has, you know, he has for the first time uh, in this conversation, made sense. Okay? He's pronounced himself on a fact that... If the head of state knows or knew that this money was being lost every day, the people who did it should have been prosecuted. Yes, yes. You know, he has, I agree with that point. But what he does not then add after saying that is that the deputy president also knew that that money was being lost. And now his boss is accusing him, him of being the one who took that money. Now, I think that if, 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 you, if, if, you are, if you are honest with yourself, Ahmed, you are going to admit this one fact, that it is very difficult to fight corruption when your number two is corrupt, and, we, and when your number two is the one who is leading the corrupt enterprise, it's very, very difficult. No, no, no. You know, and no. and 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 and, beside, and 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 you cannot dismiss him. But 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 what I will say to you is that is that you are right, that the head of state should have you know insisted oh, no, and tried to put prof, us with prof, handbars. If, if you are not truthful to yourself, mm. you cannot be truthful to the country, and mm. that's your problem. Mm. Because all your problem in this world starts with the deputy president and ends with the deputy president. No, no, this no country, not at all. Not at all. Me, not at all. This country. Not at all. The, 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 listen the, to the, me. The country, the country exists listen before him and it will exist after him. This country uh. loses billions of shillings. It, it is true. So it's not just the deputy president. Why, why is the president, for example, during the last 10 years, are you, are you, says, are you admitting no, that, no, no. that the deputy let, president let, uh, has, has, has let, taken let, money? Let me finish, please. Eh? Uh. You have a president who is very powerful. In fact, the last five years, he was running this country single-handedly, you know, mm -hmm. without an opposition because Raila was in his back pocket. Uh, the deputy president was thrown out of his office. So he was alone. He was running the country without cabinet, without anybody, solely. I mean, it has never happened in our history or even in many parts of the, of the world. He is on record to say that this country loses two billion to theft. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have one scandal after another. I mean, the other day I was being told the bot was transferred to some company, but that's for another day. Mm. We had COVID billionaires, guys who made billions. Mm. We had, 
you know, we had the problem with, I mean, there is no ministry that doesn't lose 80 to 70% of its development budget. And the president has mm. taken zero step during the last 10 years. Mm. You are here clapping because... No, 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 no. Wait, let me finish. You are here clapping for him because a loser whom you have been supporting all your life and who would probably lose the next coming elections, he has endorsed him. But because of that, because of so, that selfish interest yeah, you have, wait, no, 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 because of that you, selfish you interest point. he has, no, no, he has forgotten about the national interest. No, no, and no. that is the tragedy no, 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 of no, Kenya. No, 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 I'm People a, like Professor, no, I'm a, who because of that temporal political gain they are making, no. will sacrifice the national good. Ahmed, what a, Ahmed, Ahmed. Mm. We know the people who are benefited in this country by supporting political leaders and by supporting political parties. Uh, one of those people is not Professor Mutua. Let me just tell you that. Uh, you, you have hope. You are dreaming. Uh, no, 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 That's no, no, what no, I no, said. No. I'm tell, let me tell you that. You are, I, I, I have you are, been... You are a trader have, in the future market. That's, yes, I tweeted today. No, no, no. no you are a no. trader in the future market. No, no, no. Because, 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 because <laughs> you, you, deal, you deal with self-interest, so you cannot understand altruism, and you cannot understand the history of people who have devoted their lives to the struggle. You cannot understand that. Let me tell you something. The person that you are calling a serial loser for elections in this country has won at least three elections. Well, that's, I, I that's, know the, la I know the, you no, know, the, la the, the that, last time that we... I will not accept the last that. Time, that now, I know you cannot accept that, that but, that, but, but that's fact. You know, that, that, that is just fact. I was a lawyer for so, the president. So I will now, not accept. Uh, fine, yes. fine. Don't accept it. <laughs> Okay, don't accept it. Bro, bro, bro. But don't forget, he was the lawyer for the president. He was a lawyer. He, he, was, he was the lawyer for the sitting head of state. He was a lawyer for, for him. So don't think. And, 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 so, and, and so, and so, and so, and so, and so, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. If you now sit here today and you castigate the person for whom you worked and whom you embraced and for whose, for, 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 for whose political party you have you know, carried a lot of water, what does this? What does this? Say, what does that say about your sense of judgment? No, no, but that, but what does it say about your sense of judgment? You have to understand. Huh? It, it, it says to me that you are motivated by self-interest. No, no, listen. Is what it says to me. Listen to me. You have to understand that the false statement you made. Which that one? Raila has won three elections. It's, it's a fact. It's false. It's a fact. Because you know that. It's a fact. I think. Uh, Everybody knows that Raila had no chance. Everybody? Who, no chance who, who, of winning. Who, who is everybody? Tw that everybody here. Yeah. No, of course not. <laughs> of course not. And those Kenyans watching us. You know. 2013. If they, could, if they could speak, they would, they would no repudiate chance. what you are saying. Mathematically, it was impossible. Mm. And even 2022 is even worse than that. Mm. But you know the problem is their default, po mm. default uh, position is that, oh, it was rigged, Uru has stolen, right now it, it will be Ruto has stolen, even now, when the institutions mm. of the state will support you. By the way, let, let me speak no, 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 but let me oh, just no, say this, no, let me no, just no, say this. Let, no, no, but I have to, I have to say something. Yeah. If he says that Kenya is a country that is corrupt through and through, okay, where politicians steal money every day, how can they then turn around and say that elections can never be stolen? Those are two different it, it's, 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 it's a lot. No, but it's logical. It's logical. Gentlemen, it's logical. Let's, let's switch gears here. You both talk, talked about Raila a moment ago, right? And today the president did too, uh, in terms of the handshake, saying that his deputy lied about not being aware of it. Let's take a listen to this soundbite. Okay. <laughs> Na toge sirono ore atoi kareta na ke hano dramu ore atora sira na mudurio na ke tomi dramu hida e nega de akio nego ekuga de ekuga ni de ekuga dramu ora mo de nyavari kiti ni e nego de ni odo a ke tomi geke nego na ke iwida ni ana ni e ni ana mo de ora da de harabe housei mo do amu shokwara ne liana ke ni ora toi toi karana liana ke ge mo de da de ni toko geza ni ana mudurio yo na ke tomi ni odo a geke nego. Senior counsel, president says his deputy was well aware of the handshake. He told him himself. No, no, but you see, I mean, the handshake is not about telling someone that you will go and shake hand with Raila. That's not what the handshake is. The handshake is what happened after the handshake. And that was something I think Raila has said it so many times. The president has said it so many times that this was, an indiv this was a deal between just two persons. 
That's why it was not structured. That's why even Jimmy Wanjiki said that the day before he was with Raila and, and uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Orengo, and Raila did not tell them anything. So whether the president tells, uh, you know, told the deputy president or not is immaterial in my view. What is material is what were the consequences of the handshake. And the consequences of the handshake, and I think this one, even Prof will agree, is that the president replaced his deputy with Raila. Yes, the de facto vice president for the last four years in this country was Raila. And the Dija president, I mean deputy president, was thrown out to the dogs. That's why he could not even access his office. That's why he could not even participate in the cabinet. So that is the essence of the handshake. Not whether he was called and told that, you know, I'm going to see Raila and we're going to handshake. The important thing is, what were the consequences? Mm. Um, Prof. I, yeah, I, I think that he has, again, you know, missed the point. Um, the point I think that was being made in Sagana by the head of state is simple. It is that uh, the deputy president is a person who is a liar and who cannot be trusted. Okay? If the deputy president was briefed and kept abreast of the developments relating to the, um, the handshake uh, and agreed with the purpose of the handshake and supported it and then turns around and comes and says that um, he knew nothing about it, it was bad for the country and so on and so forth. Um, it's because something happened between these two men and perhaps, you know, Ahmed can tell us what happened. Um, you don't run together uh, as, um, you know, uh, as at the head of the ticket, you know, running mate. You govern for five years, and after five years, there is an ugly break, which is what has happened. Something happened between these two men. Yeah. Um, the head of state has said repeatedly, at times, and the deputy president has never repudiated him, has said that um, this young man was impatient. He was precautious. He could not wait for the baton. He began running, you know, before even the start of the second term. Um, and I think, you know, the head of the ticket is, you know, should be allowed to complete what he started. So I think, Ahmed, if you be honest with, with, with the Kenyan people and with yourself, it is that something happened here. But I know that you do not want to accept or tell the Kenyan people that your candidate is a flawed human being. He is a liar, he is a hypocrite, he does not tell the truth. This is what you will not tell Kenyans, and I think you should. No, no, but, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not uh, as disrespectful as you are because you have a personal grudge with the deputy president just out of your loyalty, not, not personal actually, out of loyalty to Raila is why you are abusing the deputy president. As a person, I don't think you have problem between the two of you, but to show your loyalty to Raila, you always go on this tangent, and it's unfortunate. I think the day you speak for yourself, I'll be very proud of you. The day you stop speaking for Raila is the day I think you will realize that, oh, I can speak on for, my, for myself I was, without pleasing I, someone. I, I, was going to say, I, I, I was going to say, I was going to say that the moment that you, you start speaking for yourself, instead of speaking for the deputy president, I'll be very proud of you. So, Prof, Prof, Prof. <laughs> you no. both have a eureka moment. You have a eureka moment. But, I will but, say that I'll be very proud of let you. Let me go back to the issue. I mean, I don't know what happened, like many Kenyans, I mean, I don't see the president every day. I don't see mm. the deputy president every day. But I think from where I sit or where I stand, it is easy to see mm. that the president found it easier to rule the country alone instead of, you know, sharing power with his principal deputy. But senior counsel, and, they and had such a bromance. Remember those guys? Yes, yes, I know. Exactly. They had the, such a bromance. Yes, yes, but you have to understand mm. that Raela provided the perfect, you know, scenario. I mean, ditch your deputy president, run this country on your own. When you need political support, I will be there for you. Few, throw me a few crumbs once in a while. Uh, that's fine with me. That is exactly what happened. Nothing else. I mean, uh, go and look uh, the history of the country from 2018, 2019, 2020. Jeff, the, Jeff, the people who are in Jubilee, uh, some of them... Like myself, yes. some, some of them sitting... Senior counsel is there? Yes, yeah, yes. Some of them sitting 
now sitting on the right hand side and the left hand side of the, of the deputy president have said openly have said openly that the bromance that you refer to between the two men uh, collapsed or ended before the elections before the elections this is before the 2017 election. The reason being? And, and, that, and that, in fact, uh, I think Mr. Kater, the former minister for, for, energy. Uh, for energy, came out and said that uh, Rahila had nothing to do with the breakup of Jubilee or the breakup of our relationship with, um, you know, Mr. Kenyatta. He said that openly no, no, on, the, on the record. No, no, no. You know, no. Suggesting, that, suggesting that, Hamid, that something happened between these two men. And I... You know, as a, as, a, as, as a Kenyan, I'm waiting to hear from them, from uh, Mr. Kenyatta and Mr. Ruto, what exactly transpired between them. The, the way I saw um, Mr. Kenyatta's uh, speech today in Sagana, the way he was gesticulating, the way he was intoning his language, uh, the way he was moving about, you could see a certain gusto in the man. And I think he is prepared to hit the campaign trail. <laughs> okay, and I think, no, just not Prof. really against against his deputy, and I think during this electioneering period, during this campaign trail that, that is going to hit, you know, he probably is going to tell us exactly what happened. You know, you sound very different from the man who criticised the man. In fact, you, do, you even refuse to call him president. You have never referred to him as president. Not, not only that, Jeff. You know, I feel sorry for Prof. Because I, I, I have, I mean, he has I have so I, many wishes that the president will do for him. He will hit the campaign trail. <laughs> he will spill the penis. He will. Your no, no, hopes no. will no, never no, come true. No, no, no. Don't waste no, your time. No, no, no. I, 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 no, you I, wanted the president no, to campaign no, for no, your Ahmed, candidate. No, no, no. He will not. No, no, Hamed. I'm Take just, it from me. No, I'm, I'm, Hamed. I'm just telling you that in fact that speech today had a lot to do with the head of state's feelings about his deputy president. Is deputy president, not about Mr. But that's Odinga. new. Not, that, that's not new. Not about I mean, Mr. We have known it for not, years. Not about Mr. Odinga at no. all. But pro. When he campaigns, and I think he will campaign. When he campaigns, I think you're going to hear him talk a lot about the deputy president. That's but your wish now. That's prof. Your wish. You have senior counsel saying he's not going to campaign for your candidate. No, I, I, I simply say that um, I say that much of the angst that we see in the country today is because a lot of people have realised that Mr. Ruto is not good for this country. And if Mr. Kenyatta has realized that, who am I to say that he has no right to realize that his deputy president is unfit to lead the country? Mm. Senior counsel, part of the speech, the president, I think uh, we have a clip of that, when he uh, criticized Ruto's newfound ally, Musalia Mudavadi. Should we take a listen to that? <laughs> economy <laughs> <laughs> Senior counsel, you're I, laughing. I think he you understands understand the language. Understand the language. He understands the language. <laughs> so no, no, <laughs> basically, you know what he said, right? You know, no, uh, you know, I mean, the president is making a huge mistake. The president wants to m write his history. I mean, that never happens. You must leave to the next generation and historians to write your history. And uh, I understand his anger because I'm sure he's not happy with so many things. He has done a lot of good things, I always admit. He has done some things poorly. Uh, but my view is that he wasted four years, you know, 2018 to 2022. It's completely wasted years. And I think I can assure you that if you sit with the president today, he has a lot of regrets in terms of the time he wasted, you know, in 2018 to 2022. But the president should leave that to historians to write. I mean, whether he, whether he is angry or not, whether he castigates Modavadi or not, history will judge him according to his performance. And there are things he have done well, especially during the first five years mm -hmm. when he was working with Ruto. Mm -hmm. But when, you know, 
uh, when uh, Raila came to the scene and, you know, started, you know, dancing on the floor or making jokes or, you know, excusing his mm. mistakes, that's where the mistake happened, I think. Mm. It was, you know, like the four big agenda, you know, nothing happened. I mean, we have, we have lost about a trillion on those projects. There's ah. no housing, there's no health care, there's no manufac manufacture. I mean, those were the lost years. And the person that caused the, pro the biggest problem and pain in terms of how history will judge the president mm. is this I think, man's I, candidate. I think this is just um, you know, a rendition of the uh, UDA's uh, talking points, um, which are essentially based on an alternate reality. An alternate reality, you know, which, which means that it's not reality. The fact of the matter is that in the first five years uh, of this administration, from 2013 to 2017, I think, and I think, um, you know, many people in, in this country know this, uh, Mr. Kenyatta had sort of outsourced the government to Mr. Ruto. And it was during that period of those first five years when Mr. Ruto was essentially a co-president, and I wrote about this uh, on, on, in, in many of my articles, that much of the corruption that we are talking about took place that much of the borrowing took place, uh, that much of the pilfering of the funds took place, um, I think it is in fact, in fact, in the last four years, that some of the things that uh, Ahmed Nasser thinks are good have happened uh, since Mr. Uh, Kenyatta sidelined his deputy. You know, um, so, I mean, he wants to extort the first five years. Uh, and Pupu, the last four, and I'm here to tell him that, you know, if he wants to be honest with himself, um, he will understand that much of the corruption and the borrowing that has put this country under a, a huge debt took place in the first five years of, you know, when, when Mr. Ruto was in fact playing perhaps the controlling uh, uh, role in running this government. By the way, senior counsel, there was a presentation in, in Sagan, I'm sure you watched it, by Andrew Wakahi of a presidential delivery unit, who said the last four years, there's been more projects, more successful projects than the five years before that. No, 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 I mean, that's complete false, you know, and uh, the fact that someone say it doesn't make it true, eh? Because we have been in this country for the last, God knows how many years. And during the 10 years of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Jubilee, everybody knows that the most impactful were the first five years. The last four years, the president, you know, came with a good policy of the four big agenda. Where, what happened to the four big agenda? They completely collapsed, completely. Manufacturing was one of the pillars, nothing happened. Health, nothing happened. I mean, the only thing that happened was infrastructure, you know, infrastructure, Chinese loans, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 percent kickbacks. I mean, that's why infrastructure is, <laughs> was the favorite for everybody. Mm. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, for me, you know, we don't consider, you know, this super highway to be an achievement. It's not an achievement. I mean, mm -hmm. it, the World Bank, the first time the World Bank said uh, you should construct it, the World Bank said the cost of this will be 12 billion. 12 billion shillings. Wait, wait, Prof. Eh? 12 billion. Eh? That's what it said. Uh, if, you read at the, if you read the Economist of this week, you will see the number of projects the Kenyan government refused to sign because of issue of kickbacks. Yes, it's all there. There's a big article in the Economist. Wait. Even the project that was, I mean, the government signed it at 60, 66 billion shillings. Mm. I mean, 22 billion shillings were added the other day. 22 billion. Which project was that? This, this uh, super highway. Oh, the, the expressway. The expressway. Mombasa expressway. 20, mm. 22 billion. Yeah, Wait, yeah. let me finish it. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, 22 finish. billion. Eh? Yeah. You know, the cement. Eh? The cement. Who supplied the cement? You tell me, they are your friends. Go, go, they are your friends. You tell no, me, no. you tell me. Go on. Go and ask yeah. your friends. No, 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 you tell me, they are go your friends. Ask your friends who got the kickback for the cement. No, you tell me. Who, who, who did? Who did? Go and ask them. No, 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 no. <laughs> tell the Kenyan people. Grand Mullah, tell us. Tell the Kenyan people. Who got the kickback for the cement? Yeah, who All did? All of these who projects did? were given 
people who are very close to my life. No, 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 no. Yeah. Come on. So, come on now. This is uh, this is let this, me finish. this is defamatory. Let me finish. Oh, no, let not. me finish. Let okay. me finish. There's nothing defamatory. We all No, 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 know. because you are you are accusing you are accusing me of what? We all know that 22 billion was just added in last month, eh? So, I mean, these contracts are just money-making contracts. <laughs> now, many were canceled because of so many issues. So, there's a lot of corruption in this yeah. government. But, there's yeah. a lot of corruption. Mm. Corruption, there's no checks and balances because the government, you know, there's no opposition, mm. there's no executive, there's no cabinet. There's I, a lot of... I think... Wait, speaking, he has speaking, a lot of... No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Speaking of infrastructure, mm. uh, Aurora and Kim Warer Dam. Exactly. You have never commented on that. Never. No, no, no. See, I mean... Oh, you've never taken any side? No, no, but let me ask you. What happened? I don't know the facts. It's the president who said that a grand corruption happened. There's an arbitration now, I think, in Dubai, uh, the case. The Italians, I think, are asking for the contract sum. Mm -hmm. The arbitrators will decide whether it was lawfully uh, terminated or not. I, the I only issue we, and uh, I think the, uh, I think uh, the DPP <laughs> spoke about corruption, and he said it's not the deputy president's docket. He said that is the Minister of Finance, mm. which is the docket of the President. That's I think what the I, DPP said. Mm. I think it's there. No, no, I, no I, I think I said earlier, I, I, Jeff, I said earlier that uh, my friend lives in an alternate universe. He continues to live there. When I between it, the two when, of us, I when, live in Kenya and you live in No, 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 when, when, uh, <laughs> no, 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 when, um, when, when corruption concerns the Deputy President, or allegations of corruption, I should say, concern the Deputy President, you suffer from this interesting spell of amnesia. <laughs> he just forgets everything. He says, I don't know. I think there's, a, there's something happening there. I, I'm not aware of that. He was not responsible for that. But when the corruption allegations point to the opposite end, uh, to his, you know, his, his, his former client over the last five years, he's very, he's very eager and anxious to talk about it. I think that, uh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think, Ahmed, I think that um, we can agree, you and me, we can agree on this. We can agree that corruption is a cancer in this country. We can agree on that. We can agree uh, on the fact that successive governments have not wanted to fight corruption. We can also agree on that. But we can also agree on one thing, that when surveys have been done in this country, Surveys have been done of public officials and institutions, you know, which are the most corrupt. I think that your candidate has always come out on top. No, no, but... Has always come, uh, on, uh, come I mean, out on top. Uh, and, and, I mean, and, uh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you have to wait. And, the, and when you look at the scandals that have dogged his candidate, I mean, the scandals, you know, you know go from here to Timbuktu. I mean, and there is nothing... Uh, there's nothing, Hamid, that you have ever said about your candidate and those candles. Nothing from uh, the, the, the construction of the Western Hotel, from uh, the, the, the attempt to, 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 to grab the Langata you know, piece of land, you know, from the, the dams, that, uh, that, the, the scandal that, uh, that, uh, that, um, that Jeff was talking about. I mean, the list is endless. Your man was sacked from the Minister of Agriculture. Do you, do, you, do, you, do, do, do you forget that? Do you for, no, there was evidence about, uh, about corruption. Who sucked him? It was Kibaki. <laughs> no, no. You know, <laughs> I have said many times, and I will repeat for the record, mm. when it comes to any aspect of corruption or governance, the pack stops with the president. He's the most powerful man in the country. Everybody works for him. He knows everything. If you... He, if he wants to know tonight, he can know what is in the bank account of Ahmed because it will be supplied to him very early in the morning. <laughs> I mean, he has cabinet ministers, he has people in the intelligence, he has people is still and is still and is still, and the president knows. You know, he knows some of his cabinet are one of the some of the wealthiest people in this country. I mean, I mean, if you go to it, headed by the deputy let finish, president, let me finish. Yeah. If you go to, if you take a taxi with one with some of these, you know, people who people who deal in land in this yeah. town, eh? mm. or even in Mombasa, and I've learned this many times, mm. they will point to you this this building is that minister, mm. this construction is that minister, this construction is this governor. I mean, everybody in this town knows which governor is building apartments, for example, in Laventon or 
and the president doesn't do anything. So he takes the blame, in my view, because he is, you know, acquiescing, tolerating, mm -hmm. or accepting that corruption. And that is why corruption flourishes. But if you say that, oh, corruption ends with the deputy president, it started with the deputy president and ended with the deputy president, people will see that as a very cheap shot. They will be very dismissive of you. They will not take you seriously. And I think that's what the president is suffering from, because for him, he only sees the deputy president, just like my learned friend. No, 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 I, but, I, I, no, 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 take, no. If no. you take a more holistic view of the problem mm. Mm. and say that, you know, these governors are corrupt, mm. my ministers are corrupt, these men in the police service are corrupt, and I'm taking action, but of course he can't action because he only has, I think, 120 days, 150 days. And that is the tragedy of Kenya. That is the tragedy of Kenya. People, especially the president, is playing politics and cheap politics at that on a very important matter called corruption. All right, gentlemen, let's take a quick break, come back and talk. We haven't even mentioned about uh, Kalonzo Musioka. They say they call him the reluctant kingmaker. Mm -hmm. Whoever he backs, will they become president? What do you gentlemen think? Let's take a break. Let's take a break. Oh, goodness, this conversation is heated. It's smoking hot when the grand mule shows up and the prof with the crystal ball. I tell you, this is one show you do not want to miss. So keep tweeting at Koinanga Jeff, at Citizen TV Kenya, the hashtag JK Live. JK Live takes a break, plenty more ahead. Do not even think of touching that dial, because we are back in a moment.